just for the students, for my players, for our guests, number one, thank you all for being here. Um, right now you see the background screen. We just wanted to make sure that you knew what to have um, in front of you so that you're ready for the art direction. In addition, my players and guests, the box that we sent you, it didn't have the, the blue cup. It's just a solo cup. So you can grab a cup or you can freehand the circle. When we do the art, it is completely up to you. Um, for those that are in the room or in the Zoom room that are not participating, that are just here to support, to watch, if you can turn your cameras off, then when we do the large grid, we'll be able to remove that so that the students and the players will be able to see each other. Um, and you will see the spotlight on David who will be leading our art direction. And in a minute, Andre is gonna introduce everybody. I just wanted to go over the housekeeping. So use the chat feature to interact with one another. Students, if you wanna say hey to one of the players, one of the guests, please, you know how to, it, there is able way to, to do a direct message or you can send a message to everyone. We want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, you know, and we know that this is different and unique for us, but we're going to make it work and just have a, a fun afternoon. Um, so I thinking um, if we want to go ahead and put up the large grid and those that aren't participating can turn their cameras off and we can see if everyone is here and get ready for Andre to get started. So if you are participating, turn your camera on. It's like, there we go. There we go, I see you, Katrina. Okay. Okay, so to give us a little more time, because I know David will take all the time he can to help lead you guys in the art instruction, I am going to go ahead and pass it over to Andre, um, and he's going to introduce the players and the guests to you guys, and then we will get started. So Andre, it is yours. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Carol, and uh, welcome uh, everyone to the fifth edition of <laughs> Painting with the Moon. Got a little bit of an echo, so I'm not sure what that is, but um, we're at Lakewood High School today and we have 20 students with us. 10 of them are seniors. So congratulations to making it to your senior year. And uh, I just wanna say, I can't even believe there are so many special and important people that have gone to Lakewood High School. When I was doing my research and saw the list, I was blown away by all the people that have gone there. You've got Shakim and Shaquill, Griffin, who are both with the Seattle Seahawks right now, former player William Floyd, who I played against many years in the National Football League, uh, former player Pat Terrell, who played with the Chicago Bears, uh, Tom Carter, who also played with the Chicago Bears and was a teammate of mine with the Bears and the Redskins. But just what, is, what a special place uh, to be from with so many great examples of success. So a special thank you to Principal Aaron Savage for allowing us uh, to do this today. And uh, Laura Mudd, assistant principal, who's kind of hustled around and helped us get all of this set up. So now what I'll do, and we, uh, before I move on, you know, the students are so special that are here today. They're representing a number of sports, volleyball, basketball, baseball, wrestling, football, soccer, swimming, and cheer. So you've got a lot of students with a diverse background competing in a lot of different sports. So congratulations to those students. So now let me introduce the pros and, and the celebrities. And I hope everyone is on the line. And what I'm going to ask the pros, just in one sentence, when I introduce you, just in one sentence, just, just say what motivates you. So just in one sentence. So the kids have a chance to at least hear from you one time uh, today because we're not in person and it's not going to be the normal interaction that we have. So just in one sentence, what motivates you? So my first pro, and hopefully he's on, uh, Jamie Collins, not related to me, but maybe somewhere way back in history, um, we're connected. He's a Super Bowl champ and pro bowler. He's an active player with the Detroit Lions and he's in his seventh season. So Jamie, are you on the call yet? 
If not, we'll move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, great. Hey, there he is. Hey, brother. What's going on? Tell the, tell the students uh, what motivates you. Um, I would say family, my family, and just me wanting to uh, be different, you know, be able to move in my own way, be comfortable with myself, uh, stand out. And um, I don't know, just the main thing is just to be comfortable. Like, you know, I just want to be comfortable with myself, you know, being able to do what I want to do. You know, not without anybody telling me what to do. So it's just the work, you know, working hard and being comfortable. You know, that's what I love. Well, that's 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 good advice for these young students. Thanks, Jamie. Moving on, yep. Lorenzo Alexander, one of my favorite players, played 14 seasons. He's a two time pro bowler doing great things in the community. Most of his career, Redskins, Buffalo, most recently uh, the Los Angeles Raiders. Lorenzo, good morning. Hey, what's going on, Dre? How you doing, brother? I'm good. Tell the tell the students uh, what motivates you in one sentence. Uh, I, I think at the, the foundation of who I am and my love for Christ, uh, my family, and really representing for uh, my kids and showing them the way which, what motivates me on a daily basis. Yeah, thanks, Lorenzo. Appreciate that. Brandon Coleman, who goes by B. Cole, gotten to know this guy a little bit over the past couple of years, uh, four seasons with the Saints, and you'll hear from him a little bit later. But Brandon, what motivates you? Hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, thanks, Andre. Um, so what motivates me is I'm gonna just go right with uh, Lorenzo said, my faith. My faith in Christ is uh, my family. Those are the two uh, pillars for me that, that motivate me each and every day. Thanks, B. Cole, appreciate that. Uh, now moving on to Alicia Clark, um, two-time WNBA champ, joining us today from France. So hopefully she's on the call. Current, she's with our home team here in Washington, D.C., the Washington Mystics. Um, Alicia, Alicia, where are you? Are you on here? If she's not on, we'll catch up to her in a bit. But you can also check her out online. She's got a lot of good stuff happening online. Marcus Smith, first round draft pick, five years, um, mostly with the Philadelphia Eagles. Marcus, are you on? I think I saw you earlier. Tell the kids. Uh, yeah, what... I'm on. Uh, well, to piggyback off uh, what Brandon and those guys said, like my faith in Christ and I would say, you know, the process, you know, fall in love with the process. You know, a lot of a lot of us have an end goal on where we want to be, but we fall in love with the process. That goal is, is much more easy to attain. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Cliff Crosby. I don't want to mess this up this year. He is a Super Bowl champ with the Rams have five seasons and Cliff now is uh, serving in a role, helping former players transition from the game. Cliff, what motivates you? Uh, well, thanks, Andre, for not messing it up this year. You did say the Los Angeles Raiders. They're the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, I always got to mess with you. But, um, you know, what motivates me, man, is, 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 is I didn't have a dad growing up. So my motivation is being the best father I can be to my 19-year-old son. Like, that's my motivation, man. Like, I can't even imagine how I survived this long without having that father figure. And so he's my motivation, to be, believe it or not. He's, he, he's my motivation. And just, just giving him the example of what a man is supposed to look like, what a father is supposed to be, and what family looks like. So that's my motivation. And all these young people that are on the call, um, I, I just love young people, man, because they have so much ahead of them and we are the examples and they're watching us. And I want, I want to be that example that they need. Thanks, Cliff, that's great advice. And thanks for keeping that real for us. Uh, Quincy Wilson, um, three seasons, Falcons and Bengals. And then I don't know how this stat keeps making its way here. Maybe it's because two of, two of the folks on my staff are from West Virginia and one went to West Virginia University. So they told me I had to mention the run against the Miami Hurricanes back in 2003. Quincy, are you on the call? Tell us uh, what motivates you. If he's not here, we'll move on. He'll join us. We're still a little bit early. Moving on to Tyrell Dodson, who's an active player with the Bills. 
just in his second season, and he finished up 2020 uh, real strong. Um, Tyrell, I saw you earlier. Come on and tell the students what motivates you. Hey, what's up, Andre, guys? I'm Tyrell. Um, what motivates me is just like uh, having a single mother growing up, um, how she provided with uh, provided for me, you know, mo um, just doing multiple jobs. So, um, you know, I play this game just thinking of her, you know, trying to provide for her now and provide for everyone that has provided for me when I didn't have anyone else around when she was. So that's what motivates me the most. Thanks, Tyrell. That's that's good advice. Now, these next two, you might even know them better than some of these players. Um, television star, uh, season star of season eight of Black Ink Crew, Kevin Leroy, who's a tattoo artist out in Los Angeles. Kevin, are you on? Did we see Kevin yet? Not yet. We're still um, Andre, Kevin gives his regrets. He couldn't make it today. He did message us. He wanted to wish the kids well, and he is super sorry that he couldn't be here. Okay, we love Kevin, but we're going to keep moving on to an even bigger star. We have Katrina Jackson, also a star of Black Ink Crew, goes by the name Cat Tat and is the owner of a tattoo salon Enigma in Beverly Hills. And you'll hear more from Katrina later this afternoon. But for now, Katrina, what motivates you? Hey guys, hey Andre, hey Carol, thanks for having me again. Um, what motivates me is just being a woman in the industry that I am um, and all the success that I know that I'm able to um, attain just by being extremely persistent, extremely um, determined and um, reaching goals that you know people think that I can't um, you know, make happen and just doing things that, you know, are not expected of me um, being a black woman in this industry. So that is probably one of my biggest motivations. Well, you've, you've worked hard and you've been a great friend to the PAF since 2017. So happy to have you back again. So now uh, my part is done. I want to turn it over to, I don't want to call him the Energizer Bunny because he's He's better than that, but I'm going to turn it over to our artist who's going to take you through the show today, David Sexton. Take it away, David. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi. So I'm so excited to be here today. Um, I did want to say that during this shutdown and all these difficult times, uh, art has kept me going. I've been doing all kinds of art by myself during the deepest parts of the shutdown. I did this piece, uh, Black Panther Mandala um, for Chadwick Boseman. It, every night I've been doing something that has helped me to get through this process. And, and now lately I've been able to use that art to reach out to the community by teaching a bunch of Zoom classes. Um, I, I gotta say at first I was like, I don't know how I feel about Zoom. But it is, it does have its, its amazing benefits in that we can be with people from all over the country, all over the world even, in ways that we really probably hadn't thought about. So for me, art and community have been big motivators. So I'm super happy to combine them both and be a part of this NFL painting with the pros. Uh, obviously this year, we're not painting. It's part of us uh, making, going with the flow and doing what we can. So we're gonna use Sharpies and I'm gonna just go over with everybody the ingredients that we're gonna use to make this fun commemorative piece of art today, all right? Um, so everybody got boxes. We got a cool group of Sharpies. Everybody give me like a Sharpie check. Make sure you got your Sharpies and a pencil. Good, yeah? As I'm teaching, I, I, you know, you're probably muted. Feel free to unmute, yell at me if you need to. Speak to me in the chat. If I ask you for something, you can always give me a thumbs up just to let me know that we're good. Um, I can't watch you guys the way that I usually could. So I'm gonna rely on you guys to give me some feedback. So Sharpies, we got this amazing NFL branded ruler. Pretty great. I was using a folded piece of paper before now. And, uh, and now I get a, a really nice ruler. Um, we all, everybody should have a blank canvas like this, 12 by 12. If you haven't taken it out of its plastic wrapper, now is the time to do that. Take it out so that you can actually Sharpie on it and pencil on it, okay? I would love it. It may take you a second, 
But if you can locate the students in the classroom have like a Dixie cup, if you have a, a Dixie cup or a, even like a cup cup, try to locate it. The reason being that we're gonna use this to make the sun and we're gonna use the, the top of the cup to do the edges of the football so we get perfect edges. You may be like, I don't need any help. I can freehand all of this. Well, good for you. But if you no, do, you all the help I can get, David. say that. I need all the help I can get. Exactly, exactly. Look, I, no one needs to be a hero here. I'm using a cup. So I do this all the time, but I think it's good. Uh, I, I, I see the cat has a cup. Cat, show everybody your lovely cup. Look, oh, cat. F you fumbled the ball, cat. Oh, that was the other plane. There you go. Fantastic. All right. So, really, that's all we need. Those are all the fantastic. Good. We got a close up on those markers. That's all we need. We're going to do a first part with the pencil to get the structure of the grid together. And then we're going to add the Sharpies and the color and all that fun stuff. All right. Are we ready to go? Give me a thumbs yeah. up. Yes. Good. I love it. All right. So using your pencil, I'm going to use a gray, a gray Sharpie, which you don't have because it'll be easier to see. I'm going to take my handy dandy NFL PA ruler and I'm just going to put a little mark here at the, at the middle of the canvas. This is a 12 by 12 canvas. So that's going to be your six inch spot. I'm just putting a little mark there. Yup. I'm going to do the same thing on all four sides of my canvas. So I'm just marking off the middle of each side. Good. Fantastic. And here. So you'll end up with four points on all four sides of your canvas. Like so. Yep. Four points. Down, 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 down. Good. Everybody's good so far. I'm trusting. We're going to now welcome Alicia. Oh, she's come from Paris or from France. That's amazing. Hi. Like, do you want to say hi? <laughs> hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I, I, this, is, this is one of the blessings of Zoom, right? We, we get to have someone from France in our class. That's pretty amazing. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you for joining us. Do you have all your ingredients? Alicia, make sure you find a cup. Oh, and get a piece of paper. I don't know that you, we were able to ship the package to you in France, but I think you're going to be able to improvise. So I'm going to connect these two dots like this for one long vertical line. Does it matter what marker we use for that line, or should we That's use the Great pencil? question. No markers yet. Pencil. Oh. Thank you for asking. That's good. So pencil now, I, I, it's confusing because I'm using a gray Sharpie so it'll show up. But that's, okay. thank you for bringing that up. No Sharpies yet. This is a Sharpie free zone for the moment. We're going to do this erasable pencil structure. And I'm going to do a line across the middle here. And we're going to make a giant plus sign. Sort of in the center of our canvas. Like so. Good. When we've got that ready, give me a thumbs up. You got to be careful pushing with that pencil because it'll go through the canvas. Oh, wow. That's because that's you're so very strong. Like, I've Try never had that problem. But if you're, if you're super strong, sure. You could push through walls accidentally. It could be a problem. But thanks for that warning. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, be careful, guys. All right. We're gonna do a diagonal line from corner to corner. It's gonna go right through that center point. I'm gonna line it up. Our ruler is not quite long enough to handle the diagonalness of this, but you line it up with the center and then you can flip it over and line it up with the center again and you can get that diagonal, perfect. Good. And I'm going to do that on the other side. So this is a common technique in teaching where you create a grid on the, uh, on the canvas or on the paper. 
and that allows you to sort of understand where things are going to go. And we're going to use this, this grid as a reference when we're adding shapes and things later on in the, in the class. So everybody should have this. It's a plus sign over a multiplication sign. I'm going to ask everybody to just hold, hold their picture up to the canvas or to the video, to your camera, so I can do a check on you. Yes, Kat. Excellent work. <laughs> I would expect no less from a TV star slash artist. So you've nailed it. Good. Good. How you doing, Tyrell? Excellent. Very good. All right. Everybody's doing great. Okay. Now we're going to use our pencil still to do our sun in the middle of the canvas. So you're going to take the, the bottom of your cup, put it right there in the middle, and then we're going to trace around it. Excuse me, can you move? Tell me. Tell me. Can you slow down a little? I can. That's great. So listen, I, as I said earlier, I can't see you guys. So the best way to slow me down is to let me know that you, you need to catch up for a second. So I'm totally open to you yelling at me. I'm okay with that. In this case, it's okay to yell at your teacher. Just tell me, hey, settle down, settle down. <laughs> as I, I was introduced as the Energizer Bunny, I'm a go kind of guy. That looks amazing, yes, yes. Okay, good, all right. Now I'm gonna move forward, I'm gonna move forward. Take your cup, bottom of your cup, put it in the center, and we're gonna put a circle there. For our sun, this is gonna end up being our sun. You can sort of use your eyes to look and make sure that it's the same distance on all sides. It's easier to do this if your canvas is on the is laying flat. This is very tricky, guys. Don't attempt it at home on a thing. And my, my son's a little wonky, but that's going to be okay. Okay. So we got a circle in the center. David, I'm so serious over here. I, I feel like this is a quiz, like a test or something. I'm like, oh. <laughs> There is no test at the end, but I do appreciate your focus and concentration. It's that's what makes you a superstar, right? You like just dive in. So I have found though that that is part of why art is so great, right? It just, it takes you out of your head. It allows you to clear your thoughts. It allows you to focus on something that is fun, easy, and achievable. It's something that that's totally for you. So I feel like that's why a lot of people are amazing, are leaning into art during this difficult time. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next step. This is gonna get a little trickier. For those of you concerned about the test afterwards, this is where it gets tricky, kids. <laughs> All right, so look, from the top of my sun to the top of my canvas, I'm gonna put a dot sort of in the middle of that. So we all sort of have the same spot in mind. Got it? You don't have to eyeball it. You could just use your ruler too to make the middle. Oh That's, thank you for that. Yes, eyeballing is optional. Uh, if, you're, if you're an OC diva and you want to be precise, I applaud you. Yes, you can measure it. The important thing is we get a dot there. I'm going to put a dot. So in the distance between this dot and the diagonal, I'm gonna put a dot somewhere in the middle there. Again, I think actually mine's off a little bit. So ruler is optional. So did, did the, those instructions make sense? So starting in from this dot, I'm sort of looking over here and I'm gonna put a dot in between these two. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna put a dot there. So you should have three dots sort of floating in space above your sun. Good. Good. Everybody good? All right. Now we're going to use the cup to create the, the football. So I'm going to bring this down until the cup hits both of those dots. 
and then I'm going to trace underneath it like a big smiley face. It's going to look like a big smiley face. So I'm taking my cup down here. When it hits those two dots, I'm going to like that. So you'll have a big smiley face that connects the two dots. All with pencil, yeah? Good, good. I feel like I'm in a game the way I'm focusing over here. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. I see Tyrell's like doing his neck. Like he's getting ready to tackle something. He's like super <laughs> focused on it. Hey, I'm not there. Yeah. Don't put your pencil through the canvas. Right. I'm not that strong. <laughs> All right. So look, we're gonna do that same thing on the top. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the cup. I'm gonna line it up with the top here. And then I'm gonna connect the top. And that's gonna give us the top of that football. Okay, so we have like a football shape. Good. We're gonna add the, when everybody's got that done, give me a thumbs up and we're gonna start on the ocean. Good, amazing. So I am gonna use the ruler to measure here. So thanks for that tip. We're gonna do three inches from the bottom and we're gonna put a dot off to the side. That's gonna be our ocean level. You can do like three inches in the middle too. And three inches on the far side if you want to. How do I get the first dot again? What did you do? That's great, great, thank you. So using that ruler, I'm gonna find the three inch mark and I'm just gonna put it here on the side of my <laughs> Wow, that was a cool sign of sound effect. I like that. Good. So I did a, a dot here at three inches, a dot here and a dot here. And I'm gonna just connect those dots going across and that's gonna give us our ocean level. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sure. You slow down a little bit. I am slowing down. I'm going to take a breather for a second. Let everybody get caught up. This is sort of where, what it wants to look like. Looks sort of freaky, right? Good. All right. When you're caught up, let me know, and then we'll move forward, all right? Yep, it looks like yours. I think I'm doing good. I think you are too. That's good. Very impressive. Good. I think everybody's doing a great job. Good. I mean... Really, it, we're getting to the place where it's just going to be fun and easy. I am going to say, oh. let's do, so we, we have a little bit of lettering in here. We want to make sure we can put the NFLPA inside the football, okay? So I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that. So we're going to use the pencil to roughen some of these letters. So luckily, the center of NFLPA is the L. And so we've already got this line right here at the center. So just go over that with your pencil and that's gonna be an L. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a curve here so that it follows the curve of the, of the football. Good. Right at the end of that L, sort of midway through here, 
I'm going to do a line up and down like that. That's going to be R P. Mine is backwards. The screen is probably backwards. But once you got that line, just add a little, a little bit of a bump there. That line, the P is connected to the L? Uh, it is on mine, but okay. the pencil. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Maybe it won't be ultimately. We're probably going to do this where we double up the, the, line, the letters. I'm the least artistic person probably on this Zoom call, so I need all the instructions that I can get. So I admire your courage for coming on and being part of this. Then that's great. All the way from France, which is like the art center of the world. After you've done this class, you're going to be out in some Parisian plaza selling drawings. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Possibly. All right. So look, so we're going to do one more line here like that and then i'm going to curve down with a little triangle that's going to be our a and we're going to add like a little line there i'm i'm do i'm going backwards i know So again, about halfway between the center and the other side, we're gonna put a line. That's gonna be our F. And I'm gonna use the sort of the curve of the football up here to add that. I'm gonna kind of line this up with that little center dot that we created earlier for the F. Good. And then just like our A did, we're gonna sort of fit our N I'm going to do a line here, right next to the F, and then up and down. Something like that. So we're going to just put all those letters into there. If anybody needs a second, I'll give you guys a second to get all those letters in there. Hey, David, I kind of like the pencils better than the paint, man. I feel like I'm more artistic with the pencil. <laughs> Listen, whatever medium works best for you, I fully support your creative journey. So if it's, if it's pencils, if it's Sharpies, if it's finger painting, I want you to know I'm here for you and rooting for you. <laughs> I feel like I'm in more control. Everyone we've done in person, we've had paint. I feel like I can draw the sharpness, the sharp pencil edges. There you go. The so I'm going to take that as a no. You're one of my star students, so I have to listen to you. So maybe <laughs> yeah. next year we'll do a hybrid of like paint and Sharpie, something like that. We'll talk. We'll talk afterwards. <laughs> but I do. It's pencils are great. They're easy to handle. OK, does everybody have the NFL PA in their football? Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Yum. Good. Cat. Stunning. Look, she's advanced. She's so advanced. I love it. Okay. So guys, we're going to do our islands on either side, right? So I'm just going to put a little dot right here in the middle between the middle line and the ocean. I'm going to put a little dot there. Yeah. And I'm going to do, this is not precise. I'm going to do like a little line that's going to come down just beyond that diagonal. That's our island. That's the mainland of Tampa. And then this is one of the islands out there where Hulk Hogan has a house, you know. Then we're going to do that same thing on the other side. Just put a dot in the middle. Still using the pencil, correct? Still using the pencil. We're about to we're about to lose the pencil. I'm just gonna do a couple more steps, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna set you free from the pencil. All right. So we got our islands there. I'm going to I'm gonna show you. So when the original artwork came out for the poster, I was like, oh my god, there's like 
fish that are like footballs. So I changed everything in my original design. I was like, I have to have football fish in this. It just has to be. So I added all these football fish. There's a lot of them, but we're gonna add a few of them in here. And then you can add as many or as few as you want. So I'm gonna put a dot here right in the middle between this, the top of my ocean and the bottom of my canvas. And then this time you are gonna freehand that football shape because you've learned, you've grown as artists. Think of it as a, as a smiley face smushed into a frowny face, right? A smiley face smushed into a frowny face. Like that, sort of an eye shape. Good. I'm gonna add two like teardrop shapes here for the fish lips. And then like just a little bit of a curved triangle up here for the fin. Maybe a little smaller one here for the bottom fin. And then sort of this same shape that we have for the lips in the back for the tail. But I'm gonna make them a little more pointed. That's a lot of tail on that fish but you get it, right? So I'm gonna say to you, if you wanna add a couple more of those fish, you can. I'm gonna maybe add one over here. I'm starting with the center. I add curved lines. I add lips, tail, fin. This one's got a bigger fin and that. And maybe add one more over here because it's a school. It's about community, right? You're in a school. It is a school. It's a it's a visual metaphor. That's what I'm going for. And I'm gonna do a curve and a curve. Lips, fin, fin, tail, tail. All right. And just to be sure, we're not being graded on this, correct? <laughs> that is absolutely the case. I, I give you A's for effort and for being part of this process. As one of the players said, falling in love with the process is so important right now. Our goals this year were totally messed up, right? All the things we thought that we were going to be doing this past year, gone. So I think it's important that we explore how we connect to the process of things more. That's what, I mean, I've taken away from it. So I applaud that, that talking point. We've got to be part of the journey and not be so concerned about what does it look like and, and where are we going so much as, are we having a good time getting there? Does it feel good? Does it feel right? So did that answer your question <laughs> with too much information? Okay, guys. I'm gonna do, we're gonna do like a few more lines and then we're gonna start with the Sharpies. I'm gonna do a quick check on everybody. So we're just gonna add the trunks of the palm tree, okay? So I'm gonna start here, almost at the back of my island. Almost at the back of my island, I'm gonna put a dot. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go almost all the way up to this top diagonal and I'm gonna put another dot. That's going to be the where my palm tree is growing to. Just underneath that diagonal. Good. And I'm going to connect these two dots. We don't want a straight line. That's not how palm trees are. You can give it a little bit of a curve, right? So don't worry. I mean, you don't want it to look like there's a hurricane coming, but a little bit of a curve is good. All right. I'm gonna move over here, sort of start a little bit closer to the bottom of my island. I'm gonna come up just a little lower than that. I'm gonna do my second palm tree. 
I'm going to give it more of a traditional curve, right? And then I'm going to put a point right here on that middle line. I'm going to do one more palm tree. I'm going to make it like that. And then we're going to do the trunks on the other side the same way, but give them slightly different shapes, right? For your palm tree trunks. I'm going to actually start here on this one with the smallest one. Little point there. Doing that. My second palm tree. Putting a little point there. So roughly the same height as that one. And do something like that. And then one more. My biggest palm tree. I'm going to do something like that. All right. Good. I'm going to let everybody get caught up. For just one second there. All right. So I want to do a check in with everybody because now we're getting ready to switch to Sharpies. So if I could have some of my throw a spotlight on some of my players and some of my students, just let, I want to see where you are, see how you're doing. Just holding it up. Yes, that looks great. Can I get a spotlight on Tyrell? No, that we can all see it looks fantastic. I'm gonna go to gallery view here so I can see everybody. Just hold them up. Oh, those are looking amazing. Very good. Great. Super impressive. I like it. Yeah, let's see what you got. Back it up a little bit. Back it up a little bit. That's right. Very nice. Okay. Good guys. Those are looking great. I see the little goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> Those are field goldfish. Had to be different. Sorry for that dad joke. All right. Let's, let's, do let's, let's see, see more. Let's see some of the students, David. Can they show theirs? They absolutely can. Give me some student spotlight. Wow. Those are looking good, guys. Fantastic. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Good. All right. Y'all can, you know, you guys can put some more fish, right? You can put more fish. <laughs> no more fish. Fish are optional. It's up, it's up to you. Whatever your heart's telling you, right? About the football fish. Those are cute football fish. Those are good. Very good. All right. I just thought they were adorable, those football fans. Okay, guys, you're doing great. I've got a few minutes before I'm going to turn it over to Kat. So we're going to break out the Sharpies. All right, everybody get your Sharpies out. We're going to start working on our sun first. Okay, so we're just going to, oh, you know what? Before we start doing the sun, grab your, grab your pencil with the eraser and just erase those pencil lines out of the middle of the sun. So we can have a nice clear area. Which we are then going to use the yellow Sharpie to color in, okay? You can just Add some yellow to that area. So some of what we're going to do today is going to be using techniques to sort of create texture. And some of what we're going to do is just color and stuff in. 
So this is a color and stuff in moment. Enjoy it. So I'm just gonna take that yellow and I'm gonna fill in my, my sun here. Give it a nice clean yellow look. Good. When you got that colored in, just give me a thumbs up and we're gonna grab our orange Sharpie and move on to the next step. It's fun to color, right? It takes you back to your primal self, inner child. Very relaxing. It is, it's soothing. So I'm gonna use the orange Sharpie and I'm just gonna go around that circle outline of my son with the orange. It'll go right over the pencil. It'll make the orange a little bit darker, but that's okay. When you've got the sun outlined, we're gonna keep using that orange Sharpie and we're gonna go over these lines that are coming out of the sun with orange. So I'm gonna use the orange Sharpie to go over all these lines. They may go through your the, the roots of your palm tree and that's okay with the pencil. These are going to be our sun rays coming out from the sun. I'm going to actually, I'm going to make the line a little thicker, a little thicker at the very end of it so that it's like a long triangle sort of coming in and focusing on the sun on the, just on these eight rays so i'm creating like a long triangle and then i'm going to fill that in with the sharpie sometimes the sharpie gets a little exhausted and just let it rest for a second when you're if you're continuing to color i found that they just need a second to recharge I'm going to I'm going to use that orange to go right up through the NFL PA uh, football but I'm going to break the line here. I'm not going to I'm going to go behind that football. So everywhere else I'm going to go straight through but right here I'm going to stop when I get to the football and then I'm going to continue the orange above the football. And I'm going to also stop the line at my island. I'm giving you this. So David, above the NFL PA sign, do you still want that triangle? Yes. So check out what I got going on here. So I'm, I come up, I stop that line. And then I, in, my, in my head, I'm continuing that triangle. So it does get thicker as it goes further away from the sun. 
Great question. Yes. Excuse me. Sure. So what if you accidentally went through your eyelid? <laughs> that is totally okay. Here's a, that's a great question. So if you accidentally go through your island, I say to you, pretend it was a choice that you were making. It was a commentary on the sun-soaked islands. Like, honestly, you're going to be okay. And we're going to do some texturing and coloring on the islands. So don't sweat it. It's going to be fine. Maybe add a little, maybe even add extra lines there through your eye. I, I did too. And I'm supposed to be a professional, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I, I mean, I'm going to take some responsibility for what happened. Like I should have, I should have laid it out where the lines stop and where it doesn't stop. But again, like it's okay. Do without you in a view. Okay. Yeah, my battery's drying out a little bit. Got to wait for a second. So yes, you might want to that's a, time. yes, that is definitely true, Clifton. So look, here's what I'm going to say to you. Cap your orange and then go back to your yellow, right? While your orange recharges a bit, we can go back to the yellow. And part of what we're going to be doing here, guys, is... We're going to emphasize this idea of the, of the sun rays radiating out. So we're going to start in our sun. And we're just going to do lines that are going to move away from the sun like this. Think about them, these lines, as like hands on a clock. So every line you do pivots just a little bit. And I'm going to do this really quick before anybody does anything. Have them go under the football and stop at the island unless you've decided you love that look and you want to like add more. But while we're waiting for the orange to recharge, I'm going to start this process of us adding some of these radiating lines from the sun. And this is sort of what it's going to look like, right? Everyone give that a gander. And then I'm going to say that while we're working on adding some of these radiating lines, I think it's an excellent moment for me to send it over to Kat for a second. What do you think, Kat? Do you want to talk? Can you, you, I'm sure you can talk and make radiating lines blindfolded probably. Yes, I can. <laughs> um, hey guys, it's me, Kat. Um, normally, I will be there with you guys painting. Um, but I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. Um, I know it's super, super weird times right now being in a pandemic. I remember being an upperclassman like it was just yesterday, being a junior and senior in high school, getting ready for college. And I could not imagine going through that during Corona. So you guys are in class right now, drawing, painting pictures with us. And that says a lot. Um, but I just wanna say, just don't get discouraged during these times. Like now's the time to really, really get encouraged and take this downtime to find new hobbies and to utilize all the, the resources around you that you have at school and just prepare to come out of this on the other side stronger than ever because this is gonna be done in no time and you guys are gonna finish high school. You guys are gonna have plans together to go to college or whatever it is that you want to do um, once this is all over. It's like really, really a good time to utilize this and just prepare for your futures. So I'm open to just chat with you guys. Um, I've, like I said, I really wish I was there mingling with you guys in person and doing these pictures. But if you guys have any questions, I've had to run a business during this whole thing and we've had to close down. It's affected myself, all the artists, um, all of their families. So. Um, I can just speak from a, a different place of just how it's really affected me and things that I've done to stay sane and to stay progressive and to make the most out of the situation that none of us would have ever expected. So that's all I have.
Does anybody have any questions for Kat? I have a question for you, Kat. Maybe maybe you can help the students. Kat, what are some of the things that you've done in the pandemic to, um, I guess, well, what is one new hobby you've picked up since the pandemic? How about that? Um, so one new hobby that I picked up, um, you guys know I like to paint too, but um, we had to close down the tattoo shop. So I had to find other ways to get income. Um, but I've always kind of wanted to dabble in fashion, but now I've like tried to find a way of like, okay, how can I turn my artwork into a profit? So I've been studying fashion and finding ways to put my paintings on clothing. So it's kind of been a hobby for me, just like thinking of new designs and, you know, everybody's wearing loungewear right now and sweatshirts and sweatpants. So it's like, okay, I can take these paintings that I do and put them on my, my clothing. So that's been a new hobby, just studying fashion, seeing what trends are in and seeing how I can monetize off of it. I'm a businesswoman, so that's what, what it all comes down to. But thanks, that was a great question. Good. So basically reinventing yourself during this time, reinventing ideas. Yes, yeah. gotta rebrand. Uh, <laughs> any students got any questions for Kat? Who was the most difficult tattoo? Oh, You're on mute, Kat. What was the most difficult tattoo you ever had to do on someone? Um, the most difficult tattoo I've had to do. Um, let's see. I don't know, probably like a full like back piece, just super, super detailed when like the client wanted to get it done and like like one day, that's a lot of pressure. Cause a lot of my clients like are coming from out of town and I can only work so many hours in a day. So when someone has like booked a whole trip and they're looking to complete a whole back piece and I have to figure it out, um, that was probably one of my most difficult back pieces period. Sarah, you had a question? I it. <laughs> It'll come back to you. Where is the most painful? The most painful place? Oh no no no! The most painless. Painless. <laughs> um, the most painless place anywhere that the skin is like thick. Well, first of all, I hope y'all are all eighteen before y'all thinking about getting y'all first <laughs> tattoo. Um. But I would say where, wherever the skin is kind of thick. So if you notice areas like this that you pinch and it's like really, really sensitive, those areas are gonna hurt more. So like the inside arm is probably one of the most painful, but the outside is not so much. Um, the thighs, the legs, the calf muscles, those aren't so bad. But um, like when you get to the foot in those really bony areas, that's when it starts to get really, really painful. So just find a spot with like some, some tough meat. <laughs> Would you come down here to get someone a tattoo? Um, yes, I travel. I do have travel rates, but um, yeah, I travel too. <laughs> it's been tough during the pandemic, but yeah. yeah. Or you can just come to LA, you know, book a, book a trip out there. How much you charge? <laughs> um, so you guys can email me. I'll leave my email in the comments. It's cat at cattackgirl.com. Send me any pictures of your ideas that you guys might plan to get in the future. And then I can um, discuss detailed pricing because it really goes piece by piece. Make sure you mention painting with the pros. She might give you a discount. <laughs> yes, of course. Put NFLPA family and I got you. <laughs> and you guys, you can use the Sharpies that, we, that you got from the NFLPA to design the tattoo that you're gonna send to Kat. Like it all works together, your new skills. I think it's great. Yeah, I do a lot of did my rising What'd you say, Sarah? <laughs> I did my rising the wrong way. 
Oh, she's talking about the rays. There's a lot of echo, guys. Use the chat, maybe. Use the chat. Uh, how's everybody doing with their sun rays? Poor, poor cat's been like answering questions this whole time. Have you? Ah, uh, oh, those look stunning, stunning. So that looks great. I love this. I actually really love the sun ray that like goes right through the island into the water. I think that looks super cool. Maybe incorporate that further into the design. Um, hey, Dave, do our sun rays need to go just at the top or all around? I I did mine all around. I did mine all around. So here, check out my what I'm what I got done here. Cat okay. Cat had just done the top because she was being peppered by all these questions. So, but she look. Oh wow, she's bad. But yeah, we're gonna go all the way around with our um, with the sun rays. So keep on going. I'm gonna give everybody a couple more seconds. So here's what I'm gonna say about this. We may not 100% finish all of it today on this call, but you guys have the Sharpies. I wanna give you the tools to continue doing this afterwards and to continue doing this kinds of thing ongoing. If it helps you, if it makes you feel good, if you if it relaxes you, then you can just keep keep going through, okay? You did your sun rays the wrong way. Sarah, show me. Show me your sun rays, Sarah. Let me see if I can put this on. I'm going to get rid of chat. Hold on. Close chat. She going to use my camera. Sarah. Did you do your sun rays going like a different <laughs> way? I went, I went this way, that way, a little bit of every way. I think, so Sarah, listen, here's what I'm going to say to you. That is a choice that you made. It, tell everyone it was a bold, artistic decision. Remember yeah, that? I did it on purpose. <laughs> it was on purpose because you are purposefully doing that. I like it. I mean, I feel like that could be cool. You know, if the rays are sort of doing different crosshatch techniques. Use the phrase crosshatch technique. People will think you're an expert. So I think lean into it. It's going to look great. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. So obviously straight lines are a, a technique that we can use to create our artwork here. I want to show you another little sort of a technique for um, creating texture on the canvas. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to actually grab the gold Sharpie. I know. It's quite deluxe. And I'm gonna outline my island here. I'm gonna go over the pencil line with the gold around the island. You could do both islands. Good. Good. And we're going to add, it's a pointillist technique. We're going to use it in different places, but it's just like what it sounds. You're going to use little dots to sort of give you some of that sand texture here, right? So I'm going to go in to my island and I'm going to just add some gold dots here close to the top. So when you're adding dots, and doing this sort of technique, though, if you leave white, it sort of makes it look like a lighter area, like the light is hitting it. So you might want to leave some of this island closest to the top of the island with no dots in it and have the dots sort of happening a little bit under that. But I'm going to do like a little wave of these dots with the gold, right? Sort of a long the middle of my island like that. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. And while we're dotting, because you guys don't need me to talk about dotting, 
I'm going to ask some of the players. I think that's a great question that, that was asked of Kat. Like, what have you done with the extra time you've had during the, the pandemic? Clifton, tell me. Oh. So I was bidding for a contract for the state of Maryland uh, for a youth detention center. So I wrote a 52 week curriculum in two days. That's good. On life skills two weeks to write it. That's very impressive. And you've submitted it now? It was a lot of hard work and it was very stressful. Um, I couldn't sleep one night and I got up and I just started writing for like another two, three hours. Um, I haven't submitted it yet. It's actually due on Monday. Oh, everybody. So I'm very honest that I, that I get the contract, but it was a lot of work. Yeah. But also it was probably a, an amazing learning experience too, right? That you found out you were capable of doing that. Absolutely. I surprised myself. I didn't realize that I had that information and that knowledge. And I'm very proud of myself. Even if I don't get the contract, I'm very proud of myself for seeing it through and finishing it. Amazing. And again, this idea of process, like allowing the process to, to be inspiration in and of itself. I mean, yeah. we all are hoping you get it, but it's learning from doing that's that really we're, we're all focused on. Very good, excellent. Fingers crossed. Good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the next step after we've got those dots in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uncork my brown sharpie, and we're gonna do another series of dots that are gonna be a little bit darker, and they're gonna be underneath the gold. So we're sort of mixing in the different colored textures to to create a shadow effect, all right? So I'm adding those dots all sort of along the bottom of my island. So I have a little area that has no dots and then gold dots. And now here at the bottom, I have brown dots. And we're gonna do that on both sides. And while I am, while we're doing this, I'm gonna check in with another one of my players. B. Cole, what have you done during this time to sort of refocus, rebrand? Something you've discovered about yourself. My bad for the music. Um, I'm just vibing right here, getting in my, getting in my zone. Uh, so one thing that I picked up is uh, tapping into my creativity is um, I didn't know I had um, the ability to express myself through poetry. So I started picking up um, writing poetry um, and also um, really heavy into uh, guided meditation. So I started writing guided meditation scripts as well and just tapping into that um, overall wellness at, you know, the quarantine. You know, when you, you quarantine, you, you, you go inside, you gotta stay inside of your home, your apartment, wherever you um, stationed at. So I took it, a, you know, another step further and, and went um, and did some some inner work, you know what I'm saying, for myself. You know, we spend so much time as athletes working out um, this outer shell in the weight room, training um, on the field, however you wanna look at it. But, you know, I took this time to do a lot of inner work and self-awareness work. And um, so that's some of the stuff that I picked up um you know doing quarantine for myself that's amazing that's great i i love the mandala artwork behind you yeah. that that is so cool where did that come from uh a website i just i, I thought it was creative for my green screen you know <laughs> um that's just how i looked at it i was like you know it, it speaks to my personality it speaks to you know um just a little pop to it that's it some slight i love it and it works perfect with your hair like it fits right into the design, like it all is working. That wasn't, I mean, that wasn't by accident. <laughs> I think that's great too, the idea that we were forced to go inward, right? During this time, you know, we spent time by ourselves that, that we hadn't really planned on. And I think not allowing that to make you crazy by leaning into it, you know, 
Just like we're talking, oh, I made a mistake on this artwork. It may not be what you planned, but you can gain something from it, learn something from it, make it purposeful and, and change your perspective on it. So I think that's amazing. That's great. Good. All right. I'm going to, I think everybody's got their, their sand here. I'm going to go ahead and throw in the, the palm trees here because that's something we definitely need to do. So I'm just going to go over the line that we created with brown. And then I'm going to turn it into a big triangle, right? By doubling that line so that it gets thicker at the base. So I, I go just follow the pencil line and then sort of follow next to it and allow it to get a little bit thicker here at the base. And I'm going to do that with all of my palm trees, follow the pencil line, and then sort of double that line. The, the palm tree that's shortest is going to be the furthest away. That's our perspective thing. So it's going to be the thinnest. And I want to, while we're all doing these, I want to check in with another player and get some uh, wisdom and life lessons. What else we got out here? Um, is Tyrell, Tyrell on? Do you want to yep, share with me? You? You, What's that? You hear me? Yeah. Hey, Tyrell. So what have you been, what, what's been happening with you during the shutdown? What did you learn? What crazy lessons? Um, I have been reading a lot more than I usually, um, you know, um, I've been and um, I've been into uh, cooking a lot ever since uh, we got, you know, I've been off for two weeks now. Um, so I've been cooking ever since then, trying to occupy my time and stuff like that. Give us your specialty. What's the thing that you're cooking now that's amazing, that blows everybody away? I I really like breakfast. So, um, <laughs> so avocado toast with um, smoked salmon on top of it and the egg. Oh, good. Yeah, it's my favorite meal. So cook that almost every morning. Good. I, I, I've like become avocado crazy. I don't know. Maybe it's something about the shutdown. But yeah, it's it, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> so Tyrell, are you telling me it took a shutdown for you to learn how to make toast? <laughs> hey. So it, that's what, it, it, hey, that's what I heard. <laughs> hey, so listen, you gotta, it's, it's not only toast, you gotta cut the avocado up, you gotta mash, you gotta put the seasoning in the avocado, you know, you gotta cook the egg the right way, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, go get some smoked salmon, and there you go. Hey, Tyrell, that's what I wanted you to tell me, I wanted to see the process. <laughs> All right, so, the, okay, so I cut up, so, you know, I used Ezekiel bread, you know. Um, what is that? I don't know, educate us, Ezekiel bread. Ezekiel bread's like um, I'm not really for sure how to print like, I don't know. It's like a it's like a heavy grain bread. It's it's probably I think it's one of the most healthiest breads for you. Uh, but then you know you cut up avocados. I put um, I put a little lemon in it. Put salt, pepper. Uh, I put like some bagel seasoning in it. Um, mash it all together. You know I I like I like my toast a little bit crisp. You know a little bit brown. <laughs> put a butter on the toast to put avocado on top of it. Oh, uh, over uh, over medium egg, over medium egg. You don't want it too runny, so you can enjoy your meal. And then Clifton, tell me you're not hungry now. I mean, that sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, now, 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 hey, Tyrell, that was a little bit more descriptive. Before I just heard some toast. Now you're getting a little more fancy. <laughs> you just have to warm me up. That's all. That was right. Tyrell, you had me an avocado toast, but I appreciate the extra description. That was excellent. What you put on your toast? What'd you say? What you put on your toast? Put on my toast? I just put avocado on it. Like, you know, the you, you mash the avocado up. It's kind of like guacamole, but not as much. But you, you smash avocados up and put seasoning in it, whatever you like, and put it on the toast. So you put it on as a spread. So it's kind of like a jelly type of spread on it. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. All right, thank you.
That's good. I've got. To, I feel like I'm gonna make sure I get through the class and go right in and make an avocado toast. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so I'm adding some texture here, just curved lines to like give a little description of the shape of my palm trees. I'm gonna do brown, and then also I'm gonna alternate that with some gold. Okay, just to add a little bit of texture in there, right? Brown and gold. I'm gonna I'm gonna let everybody work on that. And while we're working on this, I'm gonna check in with Alicia all the way from Paris, France, or I don't know where you are in France, to hear what you've been up to and and what what's been motivating you during this shutdown. And why are you in why are you in France? I mean, other than um, so I'm currently in Lyon. Um, I play for Tony Parker's club out here for WNBA players. A lot of us play overseas um, after WNBA season. So um, this is my third year with the club here. And um, during the shutdown, it's pretty much shut down over here too. There's a 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew every night. Um, <laughs> so I have a lot of time in the house. <laughs> and um, I love to cook. Um, it's one of my favorite passions outside of basketball. So um, I've been cooking a lot. One of my most recent feats is making fried plantains. Um, so wanting to do that and making, mixing up some different combos with that. Um, and I also love breakfast. Like Tyrell said, that's one of my faves. So, um, I love making homemade pancakes, lemon blueberry pancakes. Um, I have this, I've made up, it's called a game day pancake and we have early games. Um, and it has chia seeds and some other stuff inside of it. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big foodie. I love to eat. I love to make food. So that's, that's what I've been doing a lot of here recently. I mean, you're not alone I'm, and not just Tyrell. Like, I feel like a lot of people have discovered the joy again. I feel like it's about process, like cutting stuff up and like, you, you've got all this time. So there's, I am not a cook. Like, I'm a microwave guy, but I've started like making with my instant pot, like all these stews with chia in it and farro and stuff. I, I feel yeah. like it's a way to self take care of yourself. For sure. And, and also mm. express yourself creativity. creativity. Yeah. And uh, since I'm in France, the next thing I'm going to learn how to make is uh, homemade croissants. So that's complicated, right? It's a long process. It's not really complicated. It's more of the process. So again, falling in love with the process of it. Because I know <laughs> at the end of it, I'm going to have these buttery, soft, flaky croissants when I'm done. So, <laughs> All I know about croissants is from watching the Great British Bake Off. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I Alicia. love that show. <laughs> Alicia, what is one thing, because I've never been to France, or maybe our students haven't been to France. I guess what's one thing that we should know about France? Like, is there anything that you could share with us that was an aha moment for you where it was like, oh, I didn't know they did this out here? Oh, um, I've been in Europe so many years. It's it's all it, it's all the same for me in terms of how how Europeans live their life. But one thing that they do here is they love their afternoon coffees. Um, going to a coffee shop, meeting with friends in the middle of the afternoon is a totally normal thing over here. Um, mm. And I've kind of, you know, become accustomed to it. So I meet teammates and stuff now for afternoon coffees, either before our evening practice or after a morning practice. So it's, it's normal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, excellent. I mean, and again, it's like community and, and connecting with everyone for whatever, however we can, which is so important right now. All right, I'm gonna do another step and then we're gonna check in with another player. And I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm need to get things going because I feel like I'm gonna get into trouble any minute now on running over on the class. So I definitely want us to have a second to add these leaves. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process of the palm leaves. Right now they look like eels or something coming out of our island. So. I'm gonna start here with my middle one. There's a couple of steps to the process. I'm gonna do a curved line. It's again, it's that like smile, frowny face, smiling face line. And that's gonna be the center of my leaf. Just a curved line coming out from the top of my palm tree. And I'm gonna do 
several of them. Some go this way, and then there's like a part in the middle. Some go this way, right? So curved lines coming out of the middle of my palm tree. Good. All right. I'm going to do the same thing on all of my palm trees. Remember the ones that are further away, it's going to be smaller. The um, for from the perspective, if they overlap, if your palm trees overlap, that's totally fine. If the leaves overlap, that's how things are in the world. Things overlap with each other. If some of your palm leaves go off the edge of the canvas, and exist over here somewhere, that is okay too. They can go off the side. I'm doing like four, five, six palm front, palm trees on either side, leaves, center leaves. And then I'm gonna teach you the next step and then we're gonna check in with another player about what's happening in their world. So I've got that. It looks a little Dr. Seuss right now. I understand. But when we get that done, we're gonna add, we're gonna fill them in and then we're gonna check in. Fifteen minutes. I got I got a, a message from my boss, Carol Banks, telling me I'm doing fine. I have 15 minutes left, which is amazing. Ish. So good. We'll be able to we'll be able to get make some progress here. That's fantastic. Okay. All right. I'm gonna teach one more little step here. And then, oh my god, that's looking amazing. Clifton, I'm looking stunning. Alicia, do you want to share? Alicia, come on. Oh <laughs> you just see the sun because you got your back thing. The back of the thing. But I'm trying to show it. <laughs> I'm gonna trust that it looks stunning. Alicia, oh, they've spotlighted you now. Now you're in trouble. I don't know. Now how you gotta show it. Um, uh, put a little closer. All I see is the sun. <laughs> at least you know my sun is amazing. That's all you it's need to see. Amazing. And that sun is spectacular. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> we were right to have confidence in you. It looks like a basketball. Oh, that's true. That's true. Interesting. See how I like, might have used a pen versus a pencil when we were outlining. <laughs> oh, that's why you got those lines in there. That's good. That's all right. That's it was intentional. It was a basketball it sign. Was, it was a bold artistic decision, Alicia. That's our story, and we're sticking to Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So look, I'm going to start the process of us adding the the leaves there there's the center of the leaf and then the frond so here's what that looks like it's just another little curved line coming off of that center curved line like that they're starting in this line now if you want it's that it's that triangle shape you can add a little thickness to all these shapes and i'm going to show you what it looks like and that's going to sort of give your frond this look right got it tyrell that you're not shaking your head at me are you <laughs> i'm just saying you're just more talented than i that's why i'm like oh I'm sorry, I'm like, i can't believe that listen i'm you make a mean avocado toast i'm sure it's better than mine <laughs> but just to listen here's what i'm going to say about that i've taught a million people not a million but a lot of people how to do these palm fronds your your first palm frond is probably not going to be your best palm frond so get engage in that process and and just start on them get into the rhythm of them so look i'm going to do one that's a little bigger so it's just a curved line right but then I double that line and it becomes like a like a little bit of a hook, like a open smiley face a little bit. And it's curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line. 
and just fill them in a little bit. Good. All right. So while we work on our palm fronds, who, what other players do I need to check in with here? I want to get some feedback on what they've been up to. Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Absolutely, Lorenzo. Talk to us. Yeah, so uh, this last year has been uh, quite the transitional period for me. You know, obviously the pandemic and, and all that that's meant, but uh, it's my first year out of the, the NFL after 15 years. So I retired after the 2019 season. And so I have my family and four kids and we relocated back to uh, Paradise Valley, uh, Phoenix, Scottsdale area. Mm -hmm. And so I became a glorified teacher. Definitely have a new appreciation for my teachers. I have uh, four kids, but my three youngest are 12, 10, and six. And so I was in charge of reading and math and English and history. PE was obviously my favorite. <laughs> go outside and wear those wear them jokers out so they was ready to take a nap or be ready to go to bed when it was bedtime. Um, but outside of that, stayed pretty connected to the game. Um, did a lot of radio, uh, media type things with a couple of different networks. Um, I'm also um, really involved in the community with my ACES Foundation, and we're doing some big things here in South Phoenix, trying to build a community center uh, for um, you know, lower income minority community over in South Phoenix that really needs the, the service. And out of that, um, understanding that I can't necessarily take the same skill set and knowledge that I learned from the game. A lot of the stuff, relationships and how to work with people will definitely transition, but uh, going back to school. So I'm planning on getting my master's at GCU doing that online program. So just continue to grow, continue to learn, even though, um, you know, me and my family are doing well, I still want to be impactful and still be able to grow and become a better person every single day. Always talking about, and Tyrell knows this, because we played together actually in Buffalo, trying to become the best version of myself on a daily basis. And so if it's small incremental things, like making your bed or creating good habits or reading more, which I also did, or going to get your master's or learning how to cook, you know, it's so always trying to grow and be better every single day. So that's what I've been doing. That's amazing. That's, that's a great story. And I love that you're directing that energy back into your community. I mean, we've never had communities so in need as they are right now of support from, from one another. So that's fantastic. That's great. You know, I mean, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. That's doing my part. Fantastic. I, I mean, hey, I, Luzo, why didn't you move back to Buffalo, man? <laughs> I already know. It's yeah, probably I, about four feet of snow on the ground. You know, this Phoenix weather is 72 degrees right now. <laughs> Buffalo, it snows until May. Who's the snow right now? Right. I figured that. Yeah, Cliff. <laughs> hey, you I'm ready to get your master's, man? Hit me up so we can talk. So you can get the scholarship yeah, from the trust. I'm going to apply here soon. I've been connected with the trust and, and getting right. Uh -huh. We're talking to Hammond. So that's my guy. He's another Bay Area guy. So uh, me and him are, are real tight. Hey, well, Lorenzo, maybe help the students. When deciding on what you want to get your master's in, how did you decide what is the best, what program is for you? How did you come up with that process? Again, the process. Yeah, right. It's, you know, it's all about doing research. And so I, initially when I started out, it started out, I wanted to do, you know, I was going to get my master's at Cal, social work. But that really didn't fit the bill because I didn't want to be a licensed social worker. So I ended up finding the GCU program, actually working with the trust, as we talked about, has a lot of great resources where they actually gave me several different programs. And so I had to actually sit down and kind of think about what I wanted to do. Obviously, I'm older. I'm 37, 38. So I've had a lot of life experiences mm -hmm. of understanding what I want to do and kind of narrowed it down. So the process wasn't as strenuous. And so I guess when I was younger, I wish I would have tried more things, right? Different internships, even if I didn't know if I loved it or not. I think sometimes figuring out what you don't want to do is just as mm. important. You're young and you don't have a family, you're not married. You have the ability to, to make mistakes and going down paths that may end in a dead end because you're not really, um, nobody's really counting on you for, for, you know, for uh, support, survival, you know, feeding your family. So I think that's one of the things I wish I'd have done a little bit earlier. So just trying a little different things, looking at different programs, different areas. Um, yeah, and I really tell a lot of young people, I tell a lot of young people to volunteer. Like that's the fastest way to figure out what you don't like. Cause you don't really know what you like yet, but if you continue right. to volunteer and put yourself in different environments, 
you'll pretty you you'll find out the things you don't like pretty quickly. Yeah, and I mean that's great. I mean foundations, everybody needs some need right now, um, as we just was referring to. And so volunteering with different organizations, different companies, um, just calling and emailing, and people are are looking for help right now, and it's, and it's a great process to 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 get some life experience. I think one of the cool things about volunteering too is you really do understand if it's a passion of yours because it's not wrapped around money. Money is important, but if you find out what motivates you just for sheer love of doing that thing, it's if you are able to do that for your life, then it's like you never have a job. You're just following your passion and doing what you can. So that's great advice. Volunteer. What motivates you to just get up and do it no matter what? It's great advice. Um, how are we doing on our trees, guys? They're coming along? Good. All right. I'm going to start another thing, and then we're going to check in with, uh, with a, another player. I'm going to do the water here. So I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to start with just a blue line right along the top of my water, like that. And then I'm just going to keep doing sort of similar to what we did with our sun rays. I'm just going to do lines that are going to come down. I'm going to skip behind the fish. If those lines are not perfect, that's great because it's water, right? So I'm going to stop at the fish and then sort of continue behind my football fish. Good. Right? See what I'm doing here? Good. Sarah, how you doing? We're checking in on Sarah. Sarah, can we spotlight Sarah? All right, good. All right, so I'm gonna check in with, with uh, one of our players while we're making the water. I wanna just get some, some you know football talk in here for a second. Marcus Smith. How are you feeling about the about the Super Bowl? Let's talk about that. Man, uh, <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I, you got two great quarterbacks in uh, in the Super Bowl, and you got one of the goats. That's that's I mean the goat basically. Um, he's been playing since I was in elementary school. <laughs> And he's been winning for a long, long time. So wow. I'm interested. I'm really interested to see how that plays out because I know some people that I've talked to are kind of like, well, like I'm tired of Tom Brady winning, but I kind of want to see him get another one just to just to you know see him win. So uh, I'm I'm curious to see uh, what will happen, but it's gonna be hard to beat the Chiefs. I feel like. So Good. that's my take on the Super Bowl. That's great. Good. Do you have any any coronavirus pandemic shutdown stories? What have you been working on? Uh, well, actually, uh, I came out with a children's book. Um, it released uh, in October. Well, no, December. Sorry. Uh, it's called Bath Time with Rye, uh, which is my Put daughter. Put the title in the chat so we can all look it up. Yeah. Hold on one second. In the chat. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll put it in. put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, it's called Bath Time with Rye, <laughs> and um, it's it's about creating a bond with your with your daughter. I know a lot of us as fathers, we're on the go a lot, and sometimes you know, coming home and um, and just settling down and and having bath time with her really creates a bond with her. So that's what I did over the time where uh, the when COVID hit, I really created that bond with her because we were always on the hustle and bustle and. And I decided to create a book for that. That's amazing. Very cool. Very cool. So he turned the like shutdown and, and that that forced bubble situation into a, a book. That's great. That's just what we're talking about, you know? And you could you could and, and if you wanted to purchase the book, you could go on Amazon or uh, Barnes and Nobles and you'll see it on there. Good. Sounds great. And it's an illustrated children's book, right? Yes, sir. I'm dry. I love it. That's very good. Wow. So, you know, he totally turned lemons into lemonade. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 
Uh, she just, she just, so she turned two in October. And then I got a son on the way in May. Ooh, congratulations. So creating the book with your, you're going to have to create one for your son now. He's going to be jealous. I know. <laughs> yeah, man, I know. I'm going to have, I'm going to, I'm going to have to create something. Um, you on the hook now. Man, I got a young king coming, so I got to do something for him, man. That's right. Getting a haircut with Ty. There you go. <laughs> hey, that's no. We could do that. We could do that. Is it Ty and Rye? Are those the names? Nah, nah. My son's name is going to be Ezra, actually. Ezra. Ezra. Oh, that's cool. Getting a haircut with Ezra. That first haircut experience will be something you'll remember. <laughs> man. <laughs> Is he is he is he gonna cry? He might not though. He might not. But that's the whole part of the book. Everybody has to wait and see. Did he cry? Because he might not. <laughs> yeah. He might. I just gave we you gonna see. <laughs> Very good. Man, we gonna see. We gonna. Oh, I put it. I put it in the comments too. I right? like your baby's name. It's so different. Ezra. Thank you. Thank What's you. I, like me and my wife, we came up. Well, Sarai is actually uh, in the Bible, and um, it was, so Sarah's name, well, Sarah in the Bible, her name was Sarai, and it, they turned to Sarah, so we got it out of the Bible, and so that's why we kind of, like, stayed with that, so I felt like with my son, we kind of had to be creative with him also, so that's why we came up with Ezra, so yeah. Very cool. All right, I'm going to do one more step. I'm going to talk to one more player. We haven't talked to Jamie Collins yet. And then we're, I'm going to wrap up because my boss is telling me to wrap up. So look, I'm going to show you this technique. The first thing we should probably do, I'm going to use the black Sharpie. We haven't used the black Sharpie yet. I'm going to do an outline around these letters. So I'm going to do, essentially, I'm going to double up. So just go around the pencil line and add double that thickness, right? Like this. NFL, BA. And then I'm gonna have you And then I'm gonna also have you outline the whole football with the black Sharpie. And while we're working on that, I'm gonna I'm gonna check in with Jamie Collins and see how you're doing, my friend. Show us your art and tell us your story. I don't know if I want to show you how it is. <laughs> I have to become a new hobby. I like it. I think it's great. Oh my God, look at the wave action. That's good. I appreciate it, man. I worked very hard. I, I can see it. It's all there. You left it on the field. That is good stuff. Yeah. It felt like I was on the field. <laughs> I'm sweating, my hands sweating. <laughs> I'm literally over here sweating. <laughs> We're going to let you yeah. take a break from the sweater and talk a little bit about, yeah. about what you've been up to. Tell us. Um, really just, just been getting a lot of me time, um, enjoying, enjoying being at home. You know, during the pandemic, you know, since we always on the move, on the go, you know, always busy. So just letting the body heal, um, enjoying my beautiful lady, you know, this beautiful artist over here. She's putting that pressure on me, too. That's another reason why I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't know, man, I just... I'm a country guy, so I'm always outside. I'm always, you know, hands on with a lot of stuff out in the wild. Like, um, I don't know if it's just, you know, changing my brakes on my truck, you know, changing the oil, you know, other than taking it, you know, to get it done, I just do it myself. Um, building stuff, um, cooking, obviously, you know, I cook different animals though, you know, I, I cook animals, animals. <laughs> Um. Yeah, you man. Just, just enjoying being at home, man. Not a question. Wait, you cook animals? <laughs> yeah, I'm country. I'm from Mississippi, man. So give us an animal that you cook lately. 
Are we driving past What's going on? <laughs> related to the mom. Uh, wow. 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 <laughs> a wild hog. I'm talking about a hog. Oh, hey, hey, James, where would I go get a wild hog? Like, where would I go buy something like that from? Hey. You can't buy that, baby. <laughs> you probably could, like, at a meat market, like, probably like somewhere in the country, maybe like, I don't know, like a like a a family-owned meat market, something like that, maybe. But you just can't go buy that out of the stove, like. Okay, so where do you get it from? Because didn't you say you're in Detroit right now? No, baby, I kill it. I kill it, I clean it, I cook it. <laughs> right in the yard. Oh, Leslie's on here. Leslie, we will not have Jamie on the cooking with the pros. <laughs> You're, you're, I'm telling you, if you don't know what it is and you was to eat it and you don't know what it is, you will like it. You will love it. He's gonna sneak that into you. You're you're not gonna know. Be careful when you go over I'm his house. That boy season that that boy season that joint just right. Yeah, <laughs> no, it like go, it might be good. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> get all the sage. You gotta go buy the sage and stuff. Obviously from the um, from the meat market. Just go get the sage and stuff. But like, you can really do it yourself. We used to send it off. You know, we used we used to kill it and send it off and let them do it. But now, like with my sister, husband, and all that, so we just we went and got our own grinder. We got our own maker, so we just go buy the sage right. seasoning and get by the fat, and we just we do it ourselves. <laughs> nice. I, well, I think he should be on cooking with the pros. Like I, <laughs> I feel like there's a story there, like table, yeah. the table, like he does it all. That's amazing. And you eat, you eat what you oh, hear. That's, that's, that's impressive, man. That's impressive. I went to school, I went to college with a guy who was from the deep south, man. And he would always talk about how he catch wild animals and chickens and have to cook them. And like, we thought he was crazy in college, but now that I'm an, I'm an adult, I understand like, that's the culture down there. That's yeah. where he came just like It's just like your grandma with a garden. You know, all her vegetables is in the backyard. It's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. Instead of going to the store, buying whatever, like it's, it's, it's in the yard, it's right out there. You know what I'm saying? It's organic, it's free. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's good. It's healthy. It's healthy, man. Like, that stuff is healthy. It's literally, like, the best food you can eat. <laughs> it's better than going in the store buying anything. Like, it's, well, it's not... we heard it's your story. Can you show the camera on Cat? How does it taste, Cat? Because you she has. I was just about to chime in. <laughs> um, but he made me one. He made me a burger from it on some potato bread. And it was one of the best sausage patties that I've ever had. It was really, really good. You can't knock it till you try it. I'll try anything once. Yeah. I thought he said groundhog at first. And then I was, <laughs> so I was freaking out. I was legitimately freaking out a little bit. I was thinking of Pucks like Tawny Phil or whatever the hell. But that sounds good. I've eaten, I've eaten real, real farm fresh pig before. So guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more little thing, and then we're gonna wrap up. We're having such an amazing time. So I'm gonna. The way that I ended up coloring in the football was again this like pointless technique. I left a little strip of in the center with that that was white. I didn't add any any Sharpie to it. And then sort of above and below, I added the gold. I did then next a little strip of brown. And then right near the outline of it, I went in with the black, okay? So it's gold, brown, and then black on the edges of it to give it a nice pop. With your orange Sharpie, you can go back in and add some like, additional lines. I did some orange here and then I went over it again with the yellow, which made the orange sort of bleed into the yellow and added another thing. Um, all of these are optional things. And then I added 2021 because it's a new year. It's a new world. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Andre. I want you guys to keep, keep doing art, keep cooking, keep 
keep writing books, keep doing all these creative things that are going to sustain you and sustain your community because we're contributing to our world. So thank you guys for having me. Andre, take it away. All right, I, I'm here. Um, hopefully that was fun, Lakewood. And please enjoy the wonderful gifts that we have for you. A big thanks to David, who thinks quick on his feet. Uh, that was fun. A special thanks to all the pros that participated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, another special thanks to the PAF team behind the scenes, Carol, Laura, Leslie, Tyrone, helping to put this together and get all those art supplies out to everyone. So with that said, um, thank you so much. I feel like this was a, a successful painting with the pros. Thanks again, uh, Laura Mudd, uh, Assistant Principal, and Principal Aaron Savage for having us. Signing off live from uh, live here in my basement. Wait, uh, I think we want to do a group picture. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, That's Carol. Okay. No, perfect. I just wanted Andre for you to close out. So um, now our behind the scenes guy will put us on full grid. Oh, and if really? everyone can put up their paintings, we're going to do our best to get pictures. I know the school has some camera folks there that will get pictures and we'll collaborate it all together. But if you can put us off a spotlight and on full grid, that would be great. Perfect, so uh, everyone. <laughs> we're getting the cameras um, and the stuff's organized. Some of our cameras are not currently working. And so we may have a couple of kids that are um, paired up together. So it's gonna look a little, but we're trying to get all of them together. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. And then we'll count on you to get some pictures there and we will collage them together. Okay, perfect. So yeah, right now we have the kids all kind of gathering together right now. Um, but yeah, some of our cameras are not working. Unfortunately, on the computers, we thought we had enough, but um, some of them are not working. So, all right, are you guys ready? No, no, they're doing the individual one. They're doing a tab, like they're doing the tab one. So they have a big grid shot. So everybody, put your artwork up really quick. Show us your artwork. Amazing. Look, look at the, look at the people who have our background, you might not be able to see your, your artwork because your background screen is up. I don't know if that's intentional or not. <laughs> so they might want to change their background. They look amazing, guys. I'm very proud teacher. Keep keep going. Very nice. Good work. Okay, Andre? Yeah, well, I will come back on, David. Um, okay. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Laura, Miss Mudd. Um, just, you know, send us pictures from the school and players, guests. Thank you so much for your time today. Students, thank you. We appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed your day, and we will get pictures all together and out to you guys. So thank you. Thanks, Carol, for hosting, and Leslie, and the whole PAF staff. Um, I've been to multiple painting with the pros and I had just as much fun with this one as I have with the in-person one. So David, thank you for your energy and all the players, man. Thank y'all for sharing. Thank yeah. you guys. Yes, Cliff, you've been right, to all thank of you. them. <laughs> I know. I know. Like thank you, Carol. Thank you, David. Thank you guys. Thanks everyone. Thanks, guys.